Well, hey, welcome back, folks. Ricky McLean back for another Two Minute Tuesday. Today's topic is looking at setting realistic expectations for the aesthetic of a mass timber building. We're going to go through three steps, and I think these are all best suited to look at them as a whole instead of looking at one versus the other. So the first step we're going to look at is a specifications-based approach to setting realistic expectations for aesthetics. Now what we're talking about here is detailing in your project specifications the individual characteristics that you're looking for in the aesthetics of your mass timber products. Some examples of this for CLT there's the product standard PRG 320. Uh, appendix X1 is a non-mandatory appendix. It has some really good information in it in terms of establishing expectations for aesthetics changing things like the appearance grade, whether you're looking at an architectural appearance grade, an industrial appearance grade, it goes through things like, you know, how large are the allowed knot sizes, the distribution of knots, uh, holes, wane, those types of things that you would see in variations across different appearance grades. So CLT, that's one example. You can do the same thing with uh, nail laminated timber, NLT, dowel laminated timber. The NLT design guide has some good information in there. Uh, Appendix A of that document walks through some different appearance grade options. Glue laminated timber, very similar if you're using glue lamps for your columns and beams, or even if you're using glue lamb as a plank system for GLT. Uh, several documents that would help specifying this are AITC 110, as well as chapter 13 of ANSI A190.1. So those provide some good baselines that maybe you can use to write out the specifications for your project in setting realistic expectations for aesthetics. All right, the second way that you can help establish expectations for aesthetics on a mass timber project is looking at coatings, sealants, coatings, applied finishes to the mass timber products. In some cases, these are installed in the factory. In some cases, these are installed on site. And in some cases, it's a combination. But understanding what is the aesthetic impact of using a coating or a sealant on the mass timber products. In some cases, these are completely transparent. In other cases, we're using coatings that have some color tint to them. Of course, is this going to be highly variable based on what the owner of the project is looking for in terms of the look of their mass timber products? Of course, with all of these, using mock-ups, using samples, ways to visually express to your clients what you're looking for and what they're going to get in different finish options and helping use that as a visual representation to inform them and certainly using product samples for all your mass timber products on, on different projects that you're looking at, again, can really help set those realistic expectations expectations for aesthetics on your mass timber projects. All right, and then the third way you're going to provide some control over the aesthetics of a mass timber project is really establishing some good practices for protecting the timber during transport, but especially during construction. Moisture interactions and UV interactions with mass timber products while they're on the job site can have some significant impacts on the aesthetics of those products. So making sure that there are good practices in place for construction moisture management control um, making sure there's good protection in place for wrapping timbers, making sure that there isn't uneven distribution of UV, which might stain some members and not others. And last thing I, I wanted to mention too, in terms of mass timber aesthetics is because we're dealing with large cross sections of wood, in some cases you will see some checking, um, whether it's you know small cracks that open up uh, throughout the duration of a project, or sometimes these are occurring early on, right after the building is closed in. In most cases, these are not structural issues, but they are aesthetic challenges or issues, at least something to, to think about, something that you might expect on a mass timber project. So just be aware that this can occur. Again, the best way to avoid that is by maintaining good construction moisture management practices so that that timber doesn't get wet um, to the extent possible. All right, that's it for today's Two Minute Tuesday. As always, we'll see you back here next week.